SLT Mobitel The Connection Nivase meveni matupita rendena vise bija seta anu 9.9 atma vinasha karana Wim Cleaners Tonight, old solutions to new problems. As concerns grow on new variant, researchers reveal it to be responsive to current vaccines. The good news is the UK variant is still responsive to the vaccines which are used in Sri Lanka. Take things seriously. Chief epidemiologist calls on the public not to avoid treatment if symptoms show. We ask all the people, if they are having signs and symptoms, don't wait at home, should come to a hospital, seek medical attention. Rights and defence. China's defence minister announces continued assistance on many fronts. And we have informed uh, that uh, the Chinese side would provide another 50 million RMB military assistance gratis to the Sri Lanka side. Get in gear. COPA instructs the Inland Revenue Department to recover billions in due taxes with immediate effect. All this and much more coming up on this Wednesday, the 28th of April 2021. Alcohol adangu hand sanitizer bavita karanne. Lady roga ati karanu visha bija valuta erahi vasatan karanne. Handun vadi me milan rupial tunse panhai. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana first at nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Shanela Fernando. In your top stories for tonight, multiple variants of the virus that causes COVID-19 are circulating globally, resulting a surge in the number of infections and deaths. A result of this, a more virulent strain looks to be replacing the common strain in Sri Lanka, which has been found to be the highly contagious UK variant. With concerns piling up over the detection of the new variant, health authorities highlighted that fast-tracking the country's in inoculation drive will help the country better tackle the virus. Viruses are in constant process of change through mutation, hence the emergence of newer variants has to be expected over time. In some cases, new variants do emerge and disappear just as fast, but in some cases they persist. There are currently multiple variants of the original SARS-CoV-2 virus circulating globally with varied transmissibility and mortality rates. Meanwhile, after Sri Lanka experienced a sudden surge in daily infections, health authorities began suspecting that it may have been caused by a newer, more virulent strain. Genetic sequencing of the virus samples obtained from several areas has proved this initial suspicion to hold some truth, having revealed that the current strain circulating is a variant of the UK variant, known as the B117, first detected in September last year. We have been doing genetic sequencing from last March. Our latest report indicates the virus circulating in Sri Lanka belongs to a new strain which is categorized as B117. It is recognized as one of the variants of concern by the WHO. Why we called it as a variant of concern? Because it has an increased transmissibility. The research findings show that it's about 50% more transmissible than the original virus. It carries a 55% higher mortality rate compared to the original virus. With the new strain, the clinicians have clearly expressed their views that they continue to see patients with more and more symptoms and younger people getting severe symptoms and even getting admitted to ICUs. With that, similarities have been noted in the symptoms between the UK variant and the earlier Sri Lankan virus strain. According to data, the transmissibility of the UK variant is about 55% higher than the older one. Dr. Chandima Jeevandara says this is a result of its 23 mutations in its genetic code, which is quite a high number in comparison. 
it is becoming the dominant strain at least in three areas which we have done the initial analysis we have received a lot of samples from all over the country representing all the districts and which was sent through the Ministry of Health for genetic sequencing and we should be able to get a good idea about the circulating viral SARS-CoV-2 viral strain within about another seven days we are not very sure how the source is but you know that is our scientific guess that it could have been some leakage from the foreign returnee. Dr. Jivander added that the only way to deal with such a variant is through the fast tracking of the country's vaccine rollout. The good news is the UK variant is still responsive to the vaccines which are used in Sri Lanka. For example, the currently used vaccine Oxford AstraZeneca is responsive for the current strain. We'll be getting Sputnik V in about another one week's time. It is also responsive and also the other Chinese vaccines as well as Pfizer vaccines all have a very good efficacy against this UK variant. So it is very important that we enhance our vaccine drive and try to cover our population as soon as possible. Once the vaccine drive comes to a satisfactory level, like Israel, UK and USA, we should be able to live a normal life at least in about another three to four months time. The number of COVID-19 infections detected yesterday surged past the 1,000 mark for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic in March. The 1,111 infections detected yesterday is the highest number of daily cases reported so far. In the meantime, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira urged members of the public showing COVID-19 symptoms to seek immediate medical treatment to avoid serious complications. Meanwhile, the country's second round of vaccinations commenced during the day, with frontline workers being the first to receive the jab. Following the singular and Tamil New Year, COVID-19 infections detected in the island have showed a marked increase. Infections reported between the 22nd and 26th of April stood between the 600 to 1,000 range. However, for the first time since the COVID-19 outbreak surfaced in the country, daily infections have surged past the 1,000 mark yesterday with 1,111 confirmed patients. Of this number, 1,096 were reported across 24 districts, while Colombo accounted for 200 of the new cases. In the district breakdown, 198 infections were reported from Gampaha, 119 from Kurunagala, 86 from Gaul, 74 from Kandy, 70 from Kalutara, 55 from Nur Elia, and 41 from Polonarwa. A further 38 infections were detected in Mathra, 37 in Monragala, 32 in Matale, and 28 in Trincomalee. The 12 remaining districts accounted for the remaining 118 infections. 15 of the cases detected yesterday were reported as foreign arrivals. These cases are scattered in many areas of the country, but there are some mini clusters also. Most of these cases are people known to us who are under quarantining after the first contact of a COVID-19 patient. But in addition to that, we are experiencing more and more number of cases are reporting at outpatients department who come with signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Following this, Dr. Samaravira urged members of the public to seek medical treatment at hospitals immediately if they display any of the underlying symptoms. All over the world, COVID-19 is spreading very rapidly and also there are a lot of cases in India. There are reports that the Indian health system can't tolerate or afford this much of burden. In order to prevent the similar scenario in our country, we have to identify the cases as early as possible and then we will be able to prevent spreading of the disease and also it will help us to prevent complications and death. If anybody is having COVID-19 like symptoms like fever, cough, cold, sore throat, and then the chest pain and the difficulty in breathing, we ask all the people if they are having signs and symptoms, don't wait at home should come to a hospital, seek medical attention. Meanwhile, with testing being ramped up, 50 rapid antigen tests carried out at a factory in Moragahena yielded 17 COVID-19 positive staffers. As a result, members of 50 families who were deemed to have come into contact with the staffers have been placed in quarantine. Elsewhere in mid 12 employees of another garment factory have also tested positive for COVID-19. In the meantime, one patient at the Marvanella Base Hospital succumbed to COVID-19 yesterday. Reports say that the patient's respiratory condition worsened due to the unavailability of intensive care treatment due to capacity issues. Meanwhile, the Kotava exit of the Southern Expressway has been closed until further notice after three staffers tested positive. Following this, motorists have been advised to use the Aturugiriya and Kathudua Expressway exits. 
In the meantime, more areas across the island were placed in isolation at 6.30 a.m. today due to increases in local cases. These include the Wehrayaya, Kotam Gamboka and Rahatan Gama areas in the Monragala district, the Kumari Gama GN division in the Ampara district, and the Alugola GM division in the Matale district. In the meantime, the second round of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccinations commenced this morning, targeting staff on the front line of the country's COVID-19 efforts. State Minister of Production, Supply and Regulation of Pharmaceuticals, Professor Chandraja Sumana inspected the second round vaccinations conducted at the Ranasinghe Premadasa Memorial Hospital in Colombo. <laughs> Tawat Madipadu ak tienawa laksa haya kita asan permainan ya. Apa itu India awal dengan di la tienawa nudure di me permainan atla badi no kiat. Rusia anu spurni kene te. Ilangge sathi inang apa itu labin niya mitai spurni kene te pradhanu masing apa itu samanne janata awat la badi mata katuiti odenawa laban sathi em passi. The state minister also said that steps are being taken to address the shortage of ICU beds in the country through the deployment of additional beds where necessary. Apa rata itu yang dari satu cara, ekor kebalnya, dan gulim, yam pramana yang pamanai api covid drug ini sahaja bingkar lah tipu ni. Itu kote, memang tunggu ni relat sama ke, iya benda kote, ACLU mana dari satu cara, ekor kebalnya, dan piri anak tak tak, abil lah tipu na. Ikan ini sah api waham tiernya keras, awak kah matan sih hati ete. Meet perai yuda, nukat teru hal lalu lah tiennya dari satu cara, ekor ke covid drug ini sahaja bingkaran na. Ia nua, adat dini itu lete, api balapur itu ina, tawat panah kita asan na dari satu cara, ekor ke dan sangkia awak covid drug ini sahaja. In other news, Minister of Tourism Prasanna Ranatunga today stated that the government has no plans of closing the country's airports. Sri Lanka ke semua ke orang kawat ini permainan dia balu puham. Adi pada apa guan ni anak we panas hari dene kidal tienno. Eting e permainan tamai wedi enti ini sancara kini terbada. Hebei hemai kila api tu Sri Lanka ke semua ke orang kota koi daya wedi kila nawat tanda be. Maka tu egulah Sri Lanka ke. E ayat bad gain nno. Sauk ke upadesh paridi sancara in other news, the country's number of active cases spiked to 9,194, with 1,453 more positive patients reported during today. The country's recovery has meanwhile stood at 95,083, after 227 more patients were discharged today. Samagi Jana Balavege parliamentarian Iran Vikramaratna called on the government to look at the option of setting up a 300-bed field mobile hospital that he says can be done in mere hours while rejecting the government's claims of having sufficient ICU beds to cope with COVID-19 patients. The parliamentarian added that this requirement was advised on this need by representatives of foreign governments and organizations who met with members of the opposition yesterday. Samagi Janabalavegia MP Eran Vikramaratna warned that Sri Lanka is moving towards a crisis similar to that of India's current situation, with shortages of ICU beds and critical supplies close to crippling its healthcare system. There is no ICU capacity. There are seven, eight hundred ICU beds in the country, and that ICU capacity is completely exhausted. We have seen the pictures coming out of India. They're tragic pictures of people on the streets, people without oxygen, people dying without any help. Sri Lanka is in the red light zone on this. Vikramaratta then revealed that at a meeting between opposition leader Sajit Premadasa and the international community yesterday, the foreign representatives had stated that Sri Lanka may require a mid-sized 300-bed mobile field hospital to be set up to deal with the influx of new patients. He added that with the assistance of friendly nations and organizations, such a hospital could be set up in mere hours. Yesterday, the leader of the opposition, Honorable Sajid Premadasa, and some of us met the international community. And uh, we talked to them about the COVID situation. The request I'm making today is devoid of basically political party and so forth. We should preemptively get a field mobile hospital with ICU facilities. This hospital could be deployed within hours in Sri Lanka. If you make a request to the international agencies and our friendly countries, these facilities could be deployed in a YAFOS area or even in a civilian aircraft hangar area. Maybe we need a mid-sized one, maybe with about 300 beds, right? We are politicians, we cannot advise on the technical requirements. But on the advice that we are being given, they said that we should probably at least get a mid-sized one. Minister of Education Professor G.L. Pires announced today that the results of the GCE advanced levels will be released within a week 
which will give students enough time to enter university this September. The minister added that a firm decision on the functioning of schools, preschools, periveners and tuition classes will be taken on Sunday. However, the government's decision will be based on overriding consideration. One of the strong objectives of our government is to ensure uninterrupted education for our children in our universities and in our schools. But all decisions with regard to schools and universities have to be taken subject to an overriding consideration. That is the health of the children concerned. So this is why the government was reluctantly compelled to close all schools, preschools, periveners and tuition classes until Friday the 30th of April. But the situation in all parts of the country is being monitored on a daily basis and taking all this into consideration we are hoping to make on Sunday the 2nd of May a firm decision with regard to the functioning of schools, preschools and periveners during the week commencing Monday the 3rd of May. That decision will be made on Sunday the 2nd and will be announced immediately. Further, the Education Minister announced that the results of the 2020 Advanced Level Examinations have been planned for release within a week from today, which has been done to give students sufficient time to enter university this September. There were some difficulties that arose because of COVID-19, some practical examinations in certain subjects, technical subjects, had to be postponed because a large number of candidates tested positive for COVID-19. So we had to wait until those students recovered before we could hold the practical examination. But because of the commitment of the Director General of Examinations, the members of the staff of that department and the examiners, within a week from today we will be able to release the results of the GC advanced level examination which was completed in November last year. This I think is a signal achievement which would enable these students to enter universities in our country in September this year so they will not be losing a year. The current decision is to open universities throughout the country on Monday the 10th of May. But in the meantime, classes will be held online. China's Defense Minister General Wei Fenghe arrived in the country last night on an official visit to further strengthen bilateral ties. The Chinese defense chief met with President Gotabia Rajapaksa this morning and also met with Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa where a host of cooperation measures were announced, including the provision of 50 million renminbi defense assistance. Chinese Defense Minister General Wei Fenghe and his delegation arrived in Sri Lanka at 10.50 p.m. last night on board a Chinese Air Force B4026 aircraft. The general and his delegation were then received by the Defence Secretary, Retired General Kamal Gunratna, along with the commanders of the Tri Forces. <music> Following his arrival last night, the official meeting between the Chinese Defence Minister and President Gotabe Rajapaksa was held at the Presidential Secretariat this morning. A number of issues of mutual interest were discussed at the meeting and concluded with the Chinese Defence Minister entering a note in the official guest book. The Chinese Defence Minister then met with Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa at Temple Trees. At the meeting, the Prime Minister expressed confidence in the continued support of the Chinese government in dealing with the pandemic situation in the country. Through a translator, the Chinese Defence Minister expressed his government's continued support to strengthen Sri Lanka's human rights and reconciliation processes as well. As a good partner and friend, China will also offer continuous support to Sri Lanka on human rights and national reconciliation. And we have been informed uh, that uh, the Chinese side would provide another 50 million RMB military assistance gratis to the Sri Lanka side. Honorable Minister, I think we can agree that it has now become very clear to the entire world that vaccine, vaccines will be the only way to overcome this pandemic. On that front, on behalf of all Sri Lankans, I extend my sincere appreciation for the generous donation of 600,000 doses of Sinopharm vaccines and personal pro protective equipment since the outbreak of the pandemic. We look forward to China's continued support in dealing with this crisis. The Inland Revenue Department has been instructed to act fast to recover unpaid due from companies in default 
that at current estimates run into billions by the Committee on Public Accounts in Parliament. The department has also been instructed to submit detailed reports on its calculated outstanding revenue within a set deadline. The Inland Revenue Department has been directed by the Parliamentary Committee on Public Accounts to take immediate action to collect all tax areas which at current estimates run into billions of rupees. The committee has also called for a report to be submitted with a two to five month deadline that outlines all defaulted taxes and penalties to be recovered without any complications, as well as other problematic areas. Further, the Inland Revenue Department has also been asked to submit another report, this time pertaining to taxes and penalties to be recovered in relation to the department's legacy computer system. This includes another report to be submitted within five months on the taxes and penalties in default to be recovered without any complications based on its Ramis computer system and amounts where issues remain with recovery. The committee noted that according to the legacy system, 18 billion rupees has been identified as tax arrears from companies as at 30th March this year, which amounted to 17% of total outstanding revenue due by 30th June 2020. The committee also noted that the department's Ramis system, however, showed 87 billion rupees as tax arrears due from companies as at 30th March as well. This amounted to an increase of 47.5% based on 183 billion rupees total outstanding revenue as at 30th June last year. The committee instructed the Inland Revenue Department to recover immediately all arrears based on its legacy system and also to gradually phase out the system. The Attorney General today filed indictments against six suspects in connection with the investigation into the, into the large haul of explosives found in the area of Laktawatta in Vanatha Villuva. Indictments were filed based on 14 charges, including the collection of explosives and the maintenance of an explosives manufacturing factory. On the 16th of January 2019, the Criminal Investigation Department seized 100 kilograms of an explosive substance and 100 detonators buried near a house in the area of Laktawatta in Vanatavellua. Accordingly, the Attorney General filed indictments against six suspects in the Putulam High Court today on 14 charges, including the collection of explosives and operating an explosives factory. The indictments were filed against suspects Mohammed Mufiz, Mohammed Hamas, Gafur Mama, Ibrahim Sadiq Abdullah, Ibrahim Mohammed Naufer, and Mohammed Sajid. Indictments were also filed against Zaran Hashim and Muhammad Hastun, who died during the suicide bomb attacks on Easter Sunday. We'll return after this short commercial break. Don't go away. Welcome back in your business news. The old share price index gained 173.24 points to end at 7,239.94, while the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks ended stronger at 2,878.80 after gaining 76.74 points. Market turnover was 2.1 billion rupees. Here's Dimantha Matthew with your daily report on the market's performance. Today we saw a massive reversal in the index with the ASPI climbing by around 173 points. Significant buying interest emerged in the market, especially around the retail favorite counters. So what we are seeing is basically the dollar income companies are again being drawn into interest with some of the retail and high net worth investors buying into these stocks. The retail favorite counters were at the top of the list and these are also dominated by the dollar income companies specifically the material sector companies have been on the top dominating turnover levels today we saw turnovers exceeding 2 billion rupees and even the number of transactions exceeded 20,000 transactions so you can say that the retail activity gradually is again coming back into the market and the buying interest is improving in the overall market Market as the confidence levels are rising. The Sri Lankan rupee ended marginally lower at 199 rupees and 52 cents against the US dollar today after closing at 199 rupees and 41 cents during yesterday. Let's now have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day.
In sports news, former Sri Lanka player and coach Nuan Soiza has been banned from all cricket for six years after an ICC anti-corruption tribunal found him guilty of breaching the ICC anti-corruption code. The ban for Soiza is backdated to 31st October 2018 when he was provisionally suspended. As previously advised following full hearings and presentations of written and oral argument, the tribunal found Soiza guilty of being party to an agreement or effort to fix or contrive or otherwise influence improperly the result, progress, conduct or other aspects of an international match. Further, he was also charged with directly or indirectly soliciting, inducing, enticing, instructing, persuading, encouraging or intentionally facilitating any participant to breach code article 2.1. In addition, he has also been found to have failed to disclose to the ACU full details of any approaches or invitations received to engage in corrupt conduct under the code. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First Line. Thank you for joining. I'm Shanella Fernando. Have a good night.